Right, so this is my new three-phase motor which I'm going to use on my Chinese mini lathe with this VFD. The motor is one horsepower, 1400 RPM and um, it's got the foot mounted um, bracket at the base here which you can actually um, mount straight onto the bench at the back of the lathe. Um, you can take the uh, foot mount off if you want to and mount it on either side so there's various different positions you can have this box or the way around you want the motor um, you can have that one at the back out of the way if you want to and I've got this simple variable frequency drive off of Banggood it's 2.2 kilowatts 220 volts AC 12 amp and it's single phase to three phase and the model number is XSY-81 and I wired this up um, quite quickly yesterday because it's very easy to do and that's because the instructions um, are clearly written and there's really nice clear diagrams all easy to understand um, this is my installation here for the AT1 and it's uh, basically ground earth live neutral AC input 220 volt and then the WVU which corresponds to the actual wiring terminals in the three phase motor. And whenever I get um, instructions for things like this, I always scan them and save them in various places um, on different computers or whatever. And um, I also print them out. Um, I've printed these ones onto a nice piece of thin card. Um, these are nicer to handle in the workshop and I do actually put them in those clear sleeves and in an A4 folder and that actually saves the instructions from getting dirty or lost. I bought the correct amperage three-phase cable off of eBay brand new and I found it um, very expensive um, to buy by the meter for what you get so what I did is look up a extension lead um, it had um, like uh, a joiner plug on it waterproof joiner plug and I bought that as 10 meters long and then I have um, the joiner plug for something else um, plus I have plenty of cable in stock if I want to do any of the other machines so the connection port is on the base here you have a nice aluminium finned heat sink on the back here to take away the heat and to get the uh, connections to actually connect it up you open this door here and it's all very simple you have the earth um, connection here the AC um, neutral 220 volt um, next one and the brown um, live one 220 volt in that one and then it's UVW which actually corresponds to the um, motor um, terminals so that's all dead easy and then just remember that the earth from the three-phase cable will go in the same earth point at the um, left hand side here as the input and before I plug it in I always check the earth connections with a multimeter so the earth connection in the box onto the three pin plug earth remember to turn it on there and that's excellent and then from the housing of the motor to the earth pin on the plug and that's excellent so that's how easy it is to connect to the three phase motor and the mains in the top of the VFD there's another door um, there's a green connector block in there with 12 different connections and these are obviously used for things like external uh, potentiometers or whatever 
Another nice feature of this VFD is that the control panel here can be lifted out from the front and used remotely off of the box and it says it can be extended by 30 centimeters, one meter or two meter. So I presume that you can actually buy um, other longer um, cable connectors for it. And one thing I do with equipment like this, as with the um, computer, I actually plug the um, plug into an anti-surge socket. So I've ordered uh, one of those for this unit. So now I can plug it in. And on the camera it shows it flickering, but in use off the camera it's um, dead still on the digital. Now out of the box the um, VFD already comes with default settings on all the parameters. I think there's about 89 um, different things you can actually program this for, for this motor or whatever motor you're using. And I found like out of the box you could actually use those default settings straight away. But um, since um, I've um, been using it, I've altered a few of those for this specific motor. And it's all very straightforward to actually alter those parameters for whatever motor you're using. Um, if you follow the instruction pamphlet carefully on uh, paragraph 4 here, you have the parameter setting procedure. And I'll show you an example in a minute. The VFD has a powerful DC uh, cooling fan which is low noise and large air volume and you'll hear the fan come on when I press run. And that's absolutely brilliant. And the sound there is a bit exaggerated because I've got the box propped up against this cardboard box. When it's on the wall above the machine, I think it will actually sound a little bit quieter. And one of the things that I really like about VFDs is the ability to go straight into reverse without first having to stop the motor. And I reckon that'll be uh, great for such things like um, machine screw tapping. Another great thing this um, VFD has is this button here. They say it's a shift key in the programming mode and a jog key in the normal mode. So when the motor is stopped you can actually use that key to jog the motor. in either forward or reverse. So now I'll give a quick example of how to program it and change one of the parameters. Um, the jog uh, motion that I showed just then, just say if you wanted to uh, um, half the speed of the jog forward motion, 
um, then you would look up the parameter for that one which is number 86 jog forward frequency remember it's frequency and not RPM and that's number 86 so you go into programming go up to 86 I'll just um, bring the um, camera in so it stops that flickering a bit So take that up to 86, if you hold the button in um, then it will go fast like that or you can jog it singularly. So I'm on 86 now and then press um, function data and we've got 20 and that was the default um, figure. Now I'm going to reduce that to 10. press function data and that enters it and press programming again to come out of the programming mode and now when I press the jog button again it's 10 in the forward motion and 20 in the reverse motion and that's because I haven't actually changed the reverse parameter. And that's how easy it is to program. And that's in section four here, parameter setting procedure. And it's all very clearly written just how I've done it there. And in um, section six, it's the keys instructions. And you'll see that uh, with the um, shift, they call it a shift, but it's got um, DISP on it. Um, so it's shift program mode and jog in the normal mode. And I actually think it's worth um, going through all the um, uh, program, uh, all the way, all the parameters uh, when you get this one. It'll work perfectly all right um, as it's set with the default um, parameters. But um, I checked through all of mine, it just goes into the program mode and uh, go up and check to each one. And you can see uh, whether it's got the default figure in there. If it has, press function uh, data and then it'll go on to the next one. So you can actually just go through the whole um, lot of the parameters right up to 86. Um, in sequence if you want to and then as soon as you want to come out of the programming mode again just press program again and it's totally incredible all the things that this um, VFD can do uh, with the motor you can actually uh, vary the torque on it you can actually um, uh, set it to speed up quicker slow down quicker you've got different brake settings um, there's a terrific amount of um, things you can do and it's all clearly uh, written here with the programming parameter numbers. So just for another example there, um, PO6 uh, parameter is the maximum operating frequency. And that's set at 100 and then PO7 is the minimum operating frequency and that's set at zero and that affects the speed. Uh, like I say the default uh, was 100 on the um, VFD and I've actually changed that to 50 which suits this motor and then that gives me the um, correct uh, no load spindle speed. So I've put a bit of black tape around the motor spindle and left a bit of a gap there so I can get a reading with my infrared um, tachometer. And set at 50.
I'll get a reading of 1,487 RPM. And I find these um, tachometers a bit temperamental sometimes. You have to get them in exactly the right position to get a good reading. I do have a manual stirrup one, which is very good, uh, which makes contact. Um, but I'm getting one from Banggood, which is digital and makes contact. It has different rubber ends. And I actually think it's um, much more positive than this type. And I'll show that one in, in the video in the future. So overall, I'm really pleased with the build quality of this VFD. I'm really pleased how easy it is to actually connect up to the uh, three-phase motor and the mains. Um, there's loads of different options in here uh, for future things, if I get time. And um, I'm actually really pleased with the performance and the ease of programming the various different parameters and in the upcoming video hopefully i'll show this one all connected up to the chinese mini lathe and in operation and i hope to do a similar setup for the myford ml7